Um, so let's get started. So what is the 14 day challenge? I came up with this challenge and this challenge basically is just you draw a face from scratch for 14 attempts in a row. It can be two days apart, it can be 14 days straight in a row, but no matter how you do it, you have to get a critique um, for each day from someone. At least one person is supposed to look at it and tell you what's wrong. What I wanted to do is talk about the skill level that we're looking at. We're looking at a pretty high skill level, right? These aren't portraits that you would say are beginner. They're definitely intermediate, moving into advanced. I would not say any of these artists are beginner. So what is the problem between all of them? Because something between all of them doesn't feel accurate. Something just feels off between all of them. And this is why in my masterclass, I start with the most important lesson, which is, is the basic head shape responding to the light source? Are you actually sculpting the head or are you just placing the head there so that you can have a face? Almost all of you prioritize the face for some reason. I mean, it's not for some reason, it's obvious. The face is the character. But this leaves you with a really, really awkward, uncanny uh, form. It's different between a face that's uncanny and form that's uncanny. So. What's happening is nearly nearly none of them, actually none of them, none of them I would say are responding act accurately to the light source. The character would not be visible without the light source. So where is the light source? So look at these 14 day challengers, all successful graduates of the 14 day challenge. Every last one of them really good at drawing portraits. Every last one of them, I congratulate them for completing the 14 day challenge, for taking it on. But all of them, no matter how good they think they are, or how good they are, they all broke the same rule, which is none of them thought about the light source when it came to the head. And that's why they're all dealing with that same uncanniness. So each and every single one of these ones, I'm going to critique it and apply a really, really basic principle core shadow that responds to that light source. That's all I'm doing. I'm just adding that beard shadow. And for all of them, I'm doing the exact same correction with the head. Completely different lives. We're looking at four different human lives right now of our experience in front of us. We are looking at the lives of four different artists and they all made the same mistake, which is excessive shadow on the side of the head. Why did you make this mistake? Because a long time ago, someone gave you a pencil or a crayon and told you to draw a face and you drew a face by drawing a sphere and you drew it with a line. And that line hasn't left your mind <laughs> since that day. And all of you were given exactly the same lesson on how to draw that face. And that's why all of you made the same mistake. Because in order to be an artist, you have to be basically unlearn everything you know about making something look realistic on a piece of paper. You are missing a dimension. You An extra dimension from the real world has been taken from you and you only have two. So you have to pretend that that third dimension of the world is still active in your two dimensions. That's it's crazy, it's like magic, right? It's like alchemy, how, you, how, how am I supposed to do that? Well, you do that by completely and fully stripping the line from your mind. You can no longer say the line is why I am seeing a character because the line is defining an edge for you which is creating a confined space within, within which the object can exist. You know you're looking at a duck right now, but this absolutely is 100% not what a duck looks like in the real world, mostly because we have to think about other things in order to create as the cylinder of the neck of the duck and, and the pyramid shape or the triangular shape or that um, triangular prism shape of the, of, the, of the beak. And then the feathers have to have some kind of translucency to them. And then we have to make sure the edges of the background don't mix with the matter that we're using to represent the duck and therefore we end up with a picture of a duck, um, a drawing of a, a painting of a realistic duck. So the sketch and the picture, the only difference between them is the line. And the line is why you all had a big chunk of shadow here and here and here. Even though the sphere is begging you to believe it when it tells you, hey, there's no shadows on the top half of the sphere egg because it's not possible. All of this area and this entire area is looking at the light source. So where did you get this idea that there's shadows sitting on the sides of a, of the top of a sphere and open light source coming from the top down? Where did you get that idea? You got it from 
that line that's still haunting your art skills, that line that's still haunting your art journey. And all of you made the same mistake. And I'm going to be talking about this till the day I die. I don't think it'll ever be. As long as kindergarten teachers are still telling, as long as they will always keep me in business. Because as long as kindergarten teachers are still giving students, I mean, uh, kindergartners crayons and telling them, draw, draw your mom, draw your dad, whatever. And then they draw their little messed up looking uh, drawings. Um, as long as this line was that very first way you ever interacted with paper and art and your hand and your brain, your brain will continue to do that. Even if you got to the point where you're drawing eyes this realistically, your head still can't grasp the complete and total severance of the reliance of the line. Um, so now that we got rid of this stuff, let's take a look at how they looked before. Before? After. All right, that shadow was just unnecessary. And what it does, it makes things muddy. It makes things look gross. It makes things look very patchy. It doesn't make it look like skin anymore because skin should be able to reflect light on that top half, especially if we're talking about a bald head. But the reason why the 14 day challenge is so amazing is because you continue to draw a bald head. There's no, there's nothing that'll save you from this most essential lesson, which is start respecting the sphere on which the head lives, which is the base native shape of the head structure. So before, pick a spot, after. The age here, the bloodshot eyes here and the muddiness, the excessive shadow you had on the cheeks and the top of the head, it almost looked like foreshadowing of some kind, like this character was just pouring poison in someone's drink or a king's drink or something. This one with the excessive contrast looking downward with that shadow that you all had on the side of the head that you just did not need. Do you guys miss it? Did it give you something that um, you're missing right now? It's just the rem remnants of what happened with the line. All right, this one may need a couple more blocks of highlight. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna skip that. There was a lot of shadow on the temples. There was a lot. And again, I don't know uh, why you guys apply this shadow apart from what I already know about your habits and the way you build um, uh, symbol dependence and uh, the way you uh, replace or uh, the way you substitute realism for the line and the way the line is still sneaking back into your attempt at painting realistically. Look at the nostrils on this face. All right, and the way the eyes are looking down. So four completely different lives, four completely different artists, four completely different minds, all making the same mistake. Please make sure that you guys are doing your form studies. Do five spheres a week. It'll change the way you draw. And it's such a small, easy um, study. And it's, it's like... Um, you know what it is? It's like in Karate Kid when he tells him to paint the fence and he's like, well, I don't paint the fence. You guys were saying, oh, I don't want to do any form studies. This is stupid. If it's so easy and simple, why is it beneficial? I shouldn't even do it. And then he finds out that that whole thing was him learning basic the basics of karate. Um, so just do the form studies, you guys. Just trust me. It'll Something, something will click in your brains and you'll just become better artists. It's not hard. It's not something you have to be born with. It's not this weird illusion. The, 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 every professional will tell you the same thing. My art changed once I started using references. My art changed once I started thinking about the light. They all come back with the same report because they're all starting to respect the light, respect the form, respect the, the native shapes from which everything emerges, spheres, cubes. The reason we study those isn't because we want to turn all our drawings into geometric shapes. It's because each of these shapes carries with it a core shadow that helps us draw better those core shadows. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, it's not my style. It has nothing to do with me. It's not about my opinion about what makes an artist better. This is science. This is, this is light on matter. This is Einstein stuff. This is basic physics. Um, and you're all uh, skipping that basic study because you think art is not science. You think art isn't math and science. It isn't, it isn't this natural world. It's, it's strict to me and whatever I want to do. And if you want to paint realistically, that's just, that's something you're going to have to learn. Um, 
Sad to say, that is exactly how I used to say it. Yeah, if they're so simple, why do I have to do them? And if they're so basic and easy, I should just pick them up along the way. No, the brain doesn't work like that. You'd think it would just, I mean, it'd be so convenient if the brain just by basic mileage, even if all you did was master studies, um, basic mileage will make the brain pick up core shadow awareness. It doesn't. Core shadow awareness is something you have to force your brain to learn. Write that back to me. If you don't study core shadow awareness strictly, you're never gonna know it. You're never gonna learn it, okay? So dedicate some time for core shadow awareness and that's through the 14 day challenge. That's something else that you pick up and that's why it's such an amazing challenge because it you learn about all these other things just by drawing a face. Drawing a face uh, expedites your skill level in, in environments and still lifes and matter and textures, everything you might want to draw other than cinematic framing and composition and all that. Uh, studying a, a portrait and light treats your brain, makes your brain learn all this stuff, including course shadow awareness. Um, that's really it for today. If you want to submit your work for critique hour, please go to the subreddit icon right here on my website or go to my discord server on my community tab. If you learned something today and you want to give back, please consider joining me as a $1 patron. That's just $1 a month. Um, and it really helps support me, helps support my channel, it keeps us stable. Um, the $20 and $10 patrons come and go, but the $1 patron sticks around because it's such a small amount and it's so little to give back. But if everybody does it, then then we're, we're a lot more stable, all, all things considered. Um, so if you have learned, and don't say, oh, the next guy will do it, it's just a dollar. Um, it really does count when everybody joins in. Also, it'll make it easier for me to send out notifications through Patreon soon once that number goes up. My goal is a thousand one dollar patrons or a thousand patrons in general. Please help me reach that goal by joining me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, the sale for Portrait Studio and my masterclass is coming soon. So everything here plus two and three extra hours of content is on my masterclass and it'll be on sale soon. So if $90 is a little too expensive for you, I completely understand. Um, it will be on sale um, around the holidays and around a week for like lower than 55% off or at 55% off. Thank you everyone for joining. I will see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Bye guys.